Hey Fret fans, it is Scott from Fret Props here and today we're going to take a look at our two relay wireless trigger. First let's take a look at the circuit board itself. So this is our two relay model. We also have a 1, a 4, and a 12 relay. Uh, these are the two relays here, uh, the antenna here, and then there's a learning button here and we'll talk about that in a little bit. One of the most common questions I get is, how do you know which terminal is which um, here on the uh, screw terminals? And typically they'll be labeled on the underside of the circuit board, which is the case here. So you can see we have 12 volt plus, ground, then we have NC2, COM2, NO2, NC1, COM1, and NO1. So these are for your two relays. This is relay two, normally closed, common, and normally open. And this is relay one, normally closed, common, and normally open. You can see here that I already have some wires in the uh, circuit board here, and that's because I've wired up a couple of our little nano spotlights so that we can demonstrate the remote. I also have a power adapter here, which is going to bring our 12 volt power into the uh, terminals here for positive and negative. Let's take a closer look at that wiring. All right, so you can see here that we have our 12 volt power coming in. I've got my positive going here to the positive terminal, my negative, the black wire here, going to ground. I also have the two negative leads from our 12 volt lights going to the negative uh, ground terminal as well. I've then taken a piece of wire here and I'm jumping the positive power, 12 volt power, from plus over to C, uh, this is C2, and then over to C1 as well. Then I have the positive leads of our 12 volt lights going to NO2 and NO1. So the way relays work is that uh, normally closed is connected to common by default. When the relay switches, it'll disconnect normally closed and connect normally open. So you can see here that when that happens here on our um, relay one, that COM1 will then actually contact NO1. That'll close the circuit for this light since the negative is grounded here already, and it'll turn the light on. So that wiring will pretty much be the same for all 12 volt devices. If the device is a different voltage, um, we do have wiring diagrams for those, so you can always contact us if you have a question about wiring a 24 volt device or a 110 volt device through the relays, because you can do that as well. It's just a different wiring. All right, so next up, we're going to take a look at the remote itself. This is pretty typical of the types of remotes that you'd receive with a wireless relay. Um, it'll have a pull-out antenna here at the top, usually. It'll sometimes have this kind of sliding uh, gate that covers the buttons. We have two buttons here, since this is our two-relay uh, version. So we have A for one and B for two. One thing you always want to check when you're hooking up a wireless trigger or doing troubleshooting is to make sure that you actually have a battery inside the remote. Sometimes they ship with batteries, sometimes they don't. It sort of just depends on the supplier that they came from. So let's go ahead and unscrew this. Try to keep track of this screw because it's very, very tiny. You don't want to lose it and have to try to find a replacement. And then you can open up the actual um, cover here and see the circuit board. And so we have the battery here. Turn that upside down. So that is a A23 or 23A 12 volt battery. Go ahead and close that back up. There should also be a red LED that comes on when you press the button. So as long as you're seeing that, pretty safe bet that you have a uh, battery in there and that everything's working right. All right, so next up, let's go ahead and power up our relay here. I'm gonna plug in a 12 volt power supply. I have a 12 volt one amp power supply here. Just gonna plug it into the adapter and you will see a red light come on there. That's just indicating that the LED board has power. Now the next step is another one that trips people up a lot. You have to train this board to accept the signals from this remote. And you have to tell the board what mode to be in. Almost all of these boards will have a suite of different modes you can choose from. Uh, typically you'll be using it in what's called momentary mode, meaning that when you press the button, the relay turns on and it will stay on as long as you hold the button down. And then when you release, it'll turn off. But you can also set toggle modes where one press turns it on, the next press turns it off. And you can do flip-flop modes too, where one press turns Relay two on and one off, and one on and two off, and vice versa. All right, so let's go ahead and program the wireless base station. The first thing that I always like to do is just clear the memory, especially if you think you've used it in the previous year or there might be a setting in there that, you know, from the factory. Um, and the way to do that on this unit, and it's usually the same for most of these wireless triggers, is to hit the learning key eight times. So let's do that. And you'll see the light flash and turn off and then stay on. That means that we've cleared the setting. Now we can go ahead and set it to the mode that we actually want to use. So the first thing we're going to do is set it to momentary mode. And for that, we're going to press the button one time. 
you basically select the different modes that the unit can operate in by hitting the button one, two, three, or four times for this unit. And if the unit had more relays, you could probably add more to that. So for momentary mode, we're going to hit the button one time. The light will blink and then turn off. And then we're going to hit the A and then the B button on the remote. And you'll see the unit flash and then uh, make a noise there. One of the relays came on. So now when we hit the uh, buttons on the remote, A will turn on relay one as long as I hold it down and turn it off when I let go. And B will turn on relay two for as long as I hold it down and turn it off when I let go. So that's the most common way that you're going to be using a remote like this, especially if you're triggering like another controller, um, something like that, like a peekaboo, you'll want to wire it up and then set it to momentary mode so that when you hit the button, it just pulses that relay on for as long as you hit the button. So, you know, that'll be the trigger signal there and let go. Uh, but let's check out some of the other modes. So next we can do the toggle mode. And for that, we do two presses. Again, the light will flash and turn off. And then we do the same thing here. We'll hit A and then B. So now the relays are set to toggle. So here on our remote, if I hit the A button, the relay one will come on. It'll stay on until I hit the A button again. And the same for relay two with the B button here. Hit that, it'll stay on until I turn it off. So that's the toggle mode. All right, and the next mode we'll check out is the um, flip-flop mode. So you hit the button now three times. LED will blink and turn off. Same deal, we'll hit A and then B. And now we should be toggling. So in this mode, whenever I hit the um, button, so I'll hit A here, it should turn off one relay and turn on the other. And then I hit the B button to reverse that back. So this way, you know, you can flip between two things. So A flips it one way and B flips it back the other. We have one final mode to show here, and that is the mode that's sort of a hybrid of the other modes. It can have one relay be momentary while the other is latching. So to set that, you hit the button four times. Then on the remote, whichever one of these you hit first will be momentary and the other one will be latching. So if we hit A first and then B, once it saves that, the A button will be momentary. So as long as I hold this down, that light will turn on. When I let go, it'll turn off and the B button will be latching. It'll stay on as long as I let it until I hit it again to turn it off. So that way you can sort of combine um, the features of momentary and latching, you know, per relay. So one relay can be momentary, one can be latching, and you can flip those as well. And again, if you ever need to reset, if things are acting kind of funky, just hit this button eight times. And it'll clear out whatever setting you're currently in. So see, if you hit the buttons now, nothing happens. And this is what I run into a lot when people get these units is there looks like everything's working. They're hitting the buttons, but nothing's happening. So that's when you need to make sure to go in and use the learning key to set the mode for the wireless remote. So let's just set it back to momentary here. All right, and there we go. All right, so that's just a really quick video showing the functions of our two relay wireless remote. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us an email at sales at frightprops.com. Thanks.